Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to start our third lab. This is my personal favorite lab. This is the, um, the creation of biodiesel fuel from regular cooking oil. And this is actually something that they've known about since I was in high school. Um, literally, you could go to McDonald's or Burger King and get the uh, used fry oil and through this simple process, make diesel fuel, biodiesel fuel. And that fuel can actually be placed in cars to be burned. In fact, there was a man in Sweden that <clears throat> created a, uh, made his car where he could actually just pour the um, cooking oil into the tank of the car. And he set up the chemical reaction to take place on the inside of his car. And he was able to drive around with cooking oil. Um, and what's neat about diesel is you do get a lot of mileage off of the, uh, the fuel compared to gasoline. So there are other problems with it because it, uh, well, it gels and diesel engines work different than gasoline engines. So, okay, for this, we're gonna start off, measure out 14 milliliters of methanol, and we put it in a 125 milliliter Lemire flask. I've got this right here. I've already done that. It was already all me measured out. Okay, we're using methanol now, not ethanol like on the last lab. Okay, methanol, ethanol, obviously slightly different. Okay, methanol can be poisonous if you uh, contact it too much. All right, so we just have to be careful with it. It's not that big of a deal or anything, but we just want to be careful. Also, I went ahead and weighed out half a gram, 0 0.50 grams of sodium hydroxide. It's it says pellets, but the stuff that we have is actually in flake form. So we have that. We're going to put that, instead of putting it into the Erlenmeyer flask, as always, I am going to put it into my round bottom flask. I already have the stirrer in there. So I'm going to start off with, and go ahead and pour the methanol in there. And the reason I'm doing it in this is we can use this much safer uh, means to heat this thing up instead of having to try to heat it in an alternate method, which would be probably a Bunsen burner, which we would really rather not use. All right, I have to shovel the York side again. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and get the stir going. Oh, I guess it helps if I would pull one of the string back in. And we'll turn the thermometer on. So I'll bring it up here for you. And you can see it's stirring and heating up as it's going along. So that's gonna go along for a little while, okay? We wanna let it uh, stir for about five to 10 minutes until that NEOH dissolves. So as before, I'm gonna go ahead and set my stopwatch here. So I know how much time has passed. So we're gonna do that. While that's going then, while that's stirring and moving along, I'm going to measure out 60 milliliters of vegetable oil, okay? So here is our trusty vegetable oil, Wesson canola oil. Any type of vegetable oil will work. Okay, any type, corn oil, whatever you want to use it, they all work perfectly well, and we end up with pretty good results no matter what we do here. Okay, I need to get myself a graduated cylinder. I'm going to measure out 60 milliliters of this where that thing's fitting. You don't want to spill this junk because it's sort of in this. There we go. 
All right, there's my 60 milliliters of vegetable oil waiting to be added. This piece of glassware is one of the main things we'll be using in this lab. This is a special piece of organic chemistry glassware called a separatory funnel. You use this because it helps separate things up. They are quite expensive. We want to be careful. And that's been going for a couple minutes. We're going to wait for about five or six more minutes yet. Well, it looks like our NaOH is pretty much dissolved already. So I'm going to give it about two more minutes and then we're going to add our vegetable oil. And while that's going, I'm also going to need a thermometer on here. And one of the things we have to do for this one, part of the lab, is we have to keep this at a specific temperature. And just to make it easier to track, I'm going to put it on this digital one here. Okay. All right. <coughs> we have to sort of moderate our temperature here. We don't want it to get too hot. We wanted to stay between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius for actually a long time for 20 or 30 minutes. So this is really pretty much ready. I'm gonna turn this down, I don't want it to get any hotter. I think it's almost exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and add the vegetable oil right now. There we go. And that did, does cool it down a bit, which I hope makes sense to you. We gotta let that get back up to temperature. Once that gets up to 40, 45 degrees stage, but between 45 and 50, we're gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes or so. Okay. And the reason we're doing this is it's to trying to stop this from splitting into two layers where we have the uh, methanol and that vegetable oil, just like you use uh, vinegar and oil on your salad. They like to separate out. We gotta watch that. We don't want them to be separated out. So that's gonna continue on for a little bit and we're gonna let it go. And I'll just show you what it looks like as it's going along for a little while. And you can see in there, it's spinning pretty well. Our temperature's still coming up. It's at 36.1, so everything is working as we would like it to, so good enough. We're up to 42.43. It's getting to be at the temperature. And here's what you're going to see. I'm going to lift this up a little bit. It'll get sort of brownish. We don't want it to get too dark. If it gets too dark, then it sort of burns. It's not really truly, but that's sort of the idea. And it throws off the reaction that we're looking for trying to make our biodiesel fuel. So 
we want to keep it at a nominal temperature. Oh, it's exactly where we want it to be. We need to turn it down so it's the temperature stops going up here. We'll see where this puts us. Still get hotter. Definitely don't want it any warmer, so I gotta stop this thing from. If it gets too warm, that's bad, so I'm gonna just lift it out. See if it'll slow down that temp. We want it to keep mixing. We don't have separation, so we'll keep that going. Wait, I'm going to shut the heater off for a little bit. We want to keep it mixed. There, the temperature stabilizing for us. Ooh, ooh. Stop the work. Yeah, we'll have to lift it up again. It's not a major emergency if it goes a couple tenths of a degree over. The one thing is I need to keep it mixed. So keep that going here. Let this thing cool off just a touch. So that's the reason why we like the uh, stir rod, uh, the, the, the stirring mechanism, because Stinks having to sit there and do this. I always thought this looks like orange juice to me. I don't know about you guys. Let me keep this going for a bit until it gets down to about 49 or 48 degrees. I'm just going to swirl it myself until I can put it back in there. Uh, Up. Yeah, it's still going now. We're at 50 degrees, about 50.3. That is the only disadvantage of these uh, these specific, these special organic chemistry um, round bottom heaters is they stay warm for a very, very long time. So. Step on this half and sit down. Stand in here, stooped over. This looks good. We do not want it to get any oranger. It gets like a burnt orange. Then it's we're not going to get the results that we would like to have. So temperature wise, we're doing all right. We're right at fifty. I keep stirring this thing. Under 50 now, see if I can put it back in there. Let the stirring go. If the temperature starts to go up again. No, I think we're cooled down a bit now. That's good. Oh, it's going back up right, right away. And this thing's still too hot. Can't get let, let it get any hotter, so I will have to hold it. So we're doing okay.
it at 50, so that's okay. A little too far down, I guess. We finally got the temperature to stabilize for us here. It's been heating for 12 minutes, so we're doing okay. Don't want it to go up anymore, so I'll back to this. What I'm going to do is get my other one of these out so I can stir it, but not let it get any hotter. There we go. We are right on 50 degrees, so that's perfect. Going down just a touch now, so I'm going to turn the heating element on at its lowest level. Good and tell these are newer. I haven't really used these a lot, so I do uh, play around with them a little bit to get them work exactly like we would like. Looks like we're perfect right now. Going down a little, but not much. Slow the way down, I think. Still mixing. We're at almost 15 minutes, so that's looking good. You want to see what it looks like? You can see. Well, we're still almost 48 degrees, 47.7, I guess. Should be able to hold steady for where we're going. All right, our separatory funnel is going to be next. I'm going to take this out of here just to show you how this works while that sits there. So it's got the nice little glass um, plug on the top. And then the stopcock here, when it's turned horizontal, so the handle is horizontal, it's sealed. And when you turn the handle vertical, so it's straight up and down, that's when stuff's going to come out of there. Okay. If you can't tell, it might be, I don't think you guys can probably see it, but if I turn this to the side, you can see the little hole. So as you turn this, the hole lets stuff dribble down there. So we want this sealed like this. If you've used a burette before, this sort of works on the same principle as that. So I like to have this in the, uh, the ring stand to hold it. All right, let's check our camera. We're still at 46.7. We're doing okay. 
And we're at 16 minutes, so we don't have to go too much longer. I turn the temp up just a touch on that thing. Don't want it to drop below 45. And it's not changing rapidly, so I think we're looking good. <clears throat> Once this has uh, reacted for 20 to 30 minutes, we're going to cut it off at 20. Okay, what I'm going to do is take what's in here and pour it into my separatory funnel. Then what we have to do is let the stuff separate out into a couple layers. Okay. There's going to be a, a bunch of different stuff that's in the, in the two layers. Um, the lower layer is going to have uh, stuff like um, methanol and maybe some unused sodium hydroxide and, and glycerin and probably some water in there. It might be some other stuff. Um, as it says in the lab, I believe, if this were a um, commercial process, they'd be collecting the glycerin and probably the methanol too and then the other stuff to use to, uh, to recycle because they don't let anything go to waste in the, uh, in the industrial setting. So the top layer is going to be the biodiesel fuel. The problem is there's going to be extra stuff in there. There's going to be contamination. So we're going to try and clean it. And that's going to be part of what we're doing here too. So and we just got like um, almost two minutes left. We're right at 45 and we're going to lower so we're going to turn the heat up a bit. It's still stirring well. It's not too dark, it's not too light, so it seems to be working exactly like we would like it. We are almost done. I'm going to give it about another minute and then we are going to pour it up. All right. Okay. While that's going for the last minute, I have to grab some sodium acetate for the cleaning. So while this finishes, this is what we're going to use, anhydrous sodium acetate. That's going to be one of the things that helps clean this. Also, we'll probably just use a little tap water. We can just use the cold water that we used from our last lab to do this. So I think we're at 20 minutes. I'm going to give one last minute here. Temperature's looking pretty good. I'm not worried about that anymore. So I'm going to pull the thermometer out. Not too worried about that. I'm going to get the separatory funnel opened up and ready to rock and roll. And I'm going to shut the mixture off for us. And I'm going to open this thing up. Nice, unlike the last lab, this isn't quite as hot, so it's a little bit easier to handle. I'm going to slide that back. All I got to do is, I always like to double check, make sure that's there. I'm going to pour this into here.
I always like to be a little careful and not get the, uh, if I can help it, try to not get the stir bar, magnetic bar that's in there, into this thing. And then that pretty much does it. We want to put that right back on. Done with that for now. And you can see it is separating quickly for us. So we'll let that thing go for a little bit. So, I guess we're going to add our, our water. I guess I don't really need to wait because I have to mix it up again. So, and when I say 10 milliliters, just so you're in the ballpark again. So, all right. And I don't want to shake it. I just want to swirl it. This is going to help mix things and it will, it'll help wash things. But if you really shake it, it's going to make you sort of start over. Because you can see I still have sort of a... Uh, a dividing line there. So that's about all I needed to do. I'm just going to let it sit and continue to separate. What's going to happen once this is done separating, we're going to just drain this off. And that's what the separatory funnel is for. Is you can see what it allows you to do is do a really good job of separating liquids like this because you're draining from the bottom. It, it comes out really cleanly and you can really do a good job of getting just what you want to get out of this thing. We still got a little ways to go, but it is looking pretty darn good. It's really surprisingly good, I think. We don't want to wait too long now, because what will happen is, I mean, this is this is like uh, fat. This is like lard. This glycerin can solidify with the, the extra stuff in there, and then nothing comes out, and that sort of stinks. I always like to feel it. It's still warm. That means it's not solidified yet, so we're okay. We're almost ready to uh, go. I think we are looking pretty well separated to me. We will be using our uh, vacuum last again. I'm going to go over here for a while. Stinks is I gotta cut another filter like I did last time because I ran out of the ones that fit these Buchner funnels. So you do not miss your cover, so Well, that's going to be too big, but easier to cut stuff off and not have enough. Let's see where we're at. We want them to be. Always wise to make sure you have all the materials you need, like what I have here. This is not fun. Ooh, I 
actually did a pretty good job. That fit on there quite nicely. Okay, we got that. And then thinking we are ready to separate this out. I'm going to lower this and I just want to go slowly so I don't mess everything up. Now you can see our interface here pretty clearly, I think. Okay. What we're going to do is just, I'm going to turn this to the side. I want to drain the stuff that's on the bottom out through here. The biodiesel is going to be up in here. So it's always good to hold the top of this thing. And you can see <clears throat> the stuff we don't want to drain. You want to go slowly. If you go too fast, you're going to lose what you don't want to lose. Boom. Perfect. All right, I'm going to let that sit. That might separate yet. Then you can see it's still separating. So I'm going to give it another minute or so. I got most out what we want to do, but it's not quite done separating. I'm going to let it finish. This is the stuff we don't want. There's lots of different contaminants in here, like I was talking about um, stuff like glycerin and methanol and some extra sodium hydroxide, probably some water, could be some other trace products that, that happen, okay? They would actually take this and separate it and use it in a commercial process. We're not doing that, but you can see some more is still separating. So I got to give a little bit more time. I'm going to rush her here and give it some time. This is happening. I'm going to measure out a milliliter of water for one of the parts we need to do. And that. Oh, it's starting to solidify. I want to do this again before it gets to the point where the stuff won't come out. Sorry, I'm trying not to block this view for you. There we go. I feel like there's a little bit more to come out, but we're pretty close. There we go. That might be right on. I think I'm going to give it about two more because I can still see a little bit of separating occurring. About two more minutes to finish separating. And then we are going to vacuum, vacuum, um, filter this to suck out any impurities, any solid stuff that we have in there. And we are going to have the biodiesel fuel. And we're going to be ready for the second part, which is doing the tests on the biodiesel fuel. There's just some little bubbles that are finishing separating. I can see a little bit at the very bottom. A few of them are falling down there yet, so we don't need to hurry. I think I'm going to give it a couple more minutes than I said. What we're going to do then is three different tests for this. We're going to do a pH test. We're going to actually do a freezing point test. And then we're going to do a see how it burns test. So we're sort of going to get ready for that as time is going along here. I need to grab myself a test tube. Thank <laughs> you. 
you can see a little bit more separation occurred. And one more time, I'm going to do this. It's still, it's, it's just not quite ready. I think we're going to give it about five more minutes or so. I think that'll probably finish things. Then we just have to do the, the last three little tests, we'll do a pH test and a few other things. Um, the pH test, we'll do with some pH hydrant paper. Really quite simple. If you've had chemistry, you've probably used this before. Um, part of it, we will have to put the uh, one of the test tubes, I've got a freezer here uh, on second floor. I will go put the some of the biodiesel in the freezer and we'll talk about what that means exactly. And then we'll see how this stuff burns. I will put a, get some steel wool and put it on a watch glass. And we're gonna just drip some of the biodiesel in there and see what happens with that. So I still wanna give it a few more minutes because it's still obviously separating. So we're gonna let that go. As you can see, there's a bit more separation. It's the clear stuff that we don't want. The stuff that's cloudy, we're okay with that because that's that's something that we're going to need to use. So it's that clear stuff we want to get rid of. There's still some separation. I just got to give it enough time. I'm sorry it's taking longer than we thought, but what do you do, right? The last thing I'm going to do here before we do that, once this finish separating, I'm going to add half a gram of some sodium uh, sulfate. And what that's going to do, I think I said sodium acetate, it's sodium sulfate. And that's going to actually help get rid of the water. Okay, so this is going to finish going here. I think I grabbed the wrong stuff. I need some sodium sulfate. All right, I have our sodium sulfate. I'm going to mask that out while that thing finishes separating. Get myself a piece of paper, paper or wing paper, sorry.
It's looking really good. It's going to be a good sample of biodiesel. time here. We're pretty darn close there. I'm going to give it one last little shot. And what I'm going to do is uh, vacuum filter it. And then we're going to go our process of testing what we have here. So it'll be good. It's a fun little lab that we do. Yeah, a couple things dropping out. It's kind of really close to being done with this. I think we are done. So there is our biodiesel. We're going to have to finish a little bit, a couple little steps. So first one here. Let's get this turned on. really just to get rid of any solid. So if there's any sodium hydroxide or anything else like that left over, it's going to get filtered through. This we don't get through away. This has to be disposed of properly. So I've got a big beaker over here that I put this in. <clears throat> It is looking pretty good. There's not really much, there's not a ton of solid in there, but enough to get off what we need to get off, I think. All right, I'm going to shut that off. Take my Jupiter funnel off the top. And I'm going to pour this into this clean, dry beaker. And everything out there that we can. Okay. Last thing we've got to do here is to wash this with our sodium sulfate. And a half a gram measured out here. Pour it in. I'm going to sit here and swirl it for a little bit.
This gets rid of any water. Look like a decent sample. Sometimes you have issues and the biodiesel is a uh, sort of orangish. That's bad. That means you didn't get a good sample. It got too hot or lots of different things happened. Okay, that's probably pretty well mixed. I've got to take the mass of a clean dry 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. All right, so the mass of our graduated cylinder is 71.85 grams. Okay, so our graduated cylinder, our graduated cylinder has a mass of 71.85 grams. Now, I'm going to pour this over. And the one thing I don't like, is using so many different vessels, because sometimes you end up uh, contaminating. There's nothing we can really do here, but that, that, that's the way it is. So, Okay, so as I said, we had 71.85 grams of this thing. I'm going to take the mass of it again. Now the mass is 116.33 grams. Let me drop this down on a sheet of paper and just show it to you guys. So empty. Red cylinder was 71.85 grams. Red cylinder with biodiesel is 116.33 grams for the mass. And we're at actually slightly above, we're at 51.0 milliliters for our volume. So there's our biodiesel. So as I said, 71.85 grams was the empty, empty graduated cylinder. 116.33 grams was the graduated cylinder in the biodiesel. And we had a volume of 51 milliliters, okay? There we go, we got those. Now what we're gonna do is do some tests, okay? The first one, we're gonna put five drops of the biodiesel. And the biodiesel is not all of this, it's the stuff right at the top. So there's not a ton of it in there, but there's enough. Okay, I'm gonna put five drops of this into here. That's a milliliter of distilled water, okay? You gotta be careful when you suck this out, you don't wanna suck everything. There we go. There we go. All right, I'm going to mix this up a little bit. Now what we have to do is use our pH paper. We want to determine the pH of that stuff. All right, so I'm going to get a hunk of pH paper. What we use for this is this thing, this is a colorimeter, okay? What I'm gonna do is grab myself a stirring rod. Okay, nice and clean, it hasn't been used. I like to dip it in and make sure it's been stirred up a little bit. And all you have to do is touch this to this paper. Let me show you what it looks like you can see it change to this greenish color. Now, what you do is compare, okay? And I wanna say that looks like that one right there. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanna say that looks like that one right there. I'm thinking the pH is gonna be nine or so. So I think our pH ends up being nine. I'm gonna jot that down for you. Again, you can see what that looks like and you can see or colorimeter if you want to judge for yourself. All right, so the pH is nine. OK, 
Okay, we got two other parts to do. All right. One of them has sort of already started for us. Now I put some biodiesel in here, okay? I'm gonna take this down and put it in the freezer. And while we walk, I'm gonna to talk to you, okay? So there's our biodiesel. Okay, what happens is diesel has a pretty high freezing point. Um, and that's actually an issue with diesel fuel in the state of Minnesota, if you think about it. We actually end up having three different mixes of diesel fuel. In the winter, when it gets really cold, you really can't use biodiesel because it freezes up. It doesn't actually freeze up, it gels. Um, and a, a, a gel is not gonna run through the, uh, through the fuel lines and allow you to be able to do what you wanna do with this thing. All right, so. We're having a little adventure here. Okay. Well, I'm opening this up. I bet you didn't know there was weird stuff back here in the storeroom and there's a pop machine, how about that? But we have a freezer here. I'm gonna put this in here and we're gonna let it cool down. Usually I bring myself a test tube rack and I totally forgot. So we'll put that there and shut it. This only takes about five minutes for it to uh, to gel up. So I'm going to come back and get that in a second while we walk back to the classroom. <clears throat> the last part of the um, test that we're going to do, we'll do that now. We're, we're waiting for the, uh, the gelling, see if it does gel. Um, we're going to do a little flammability test, see if this stuff will burn. Because if it is not flammable, Probably not gonna work as a fuel for us. Almost done. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Put back there. So this part's sort of fun. I get a wad of steel wool, and you sort of end up spreading it out. And then what you want to do is ball it up. We want it to be like the size of a foosball or a ping pong ball, okay? And what I'm going to do is put this on a watch glass, okay guys? And I'm going to sort of push some of our stuff back away because we just would like to be smart about this. And what I'm going to do is dribble some of our biodiesel onto that thing. Right, one more time. Now, what you're looking for to try and see how long does it burn for, okay? This one you're gonna have to sort of figure out. You can rewatch the video if you have to. Okay, it's sort of hard for me to do both, but let's see what happens here. Just in case everything explodes, I like to have a little water here. Okay. Started on fire, but burn them, burn them, burn them, burn them, burn them. Oh, it went out pretty quickly. No, oh, it's still going. It's still burning. And that's where I think the flame went out. Let me just try once. No, nope. there it finally went out. You know, it's probably a good 10 or 15 seconds. Hard to tell exactly. But there is flammability of the stuff. Not great, but okay. Yeah, I think that was about it. So it did burn. You know, I think that probably indicates we do have biodiesel in there, no doubt. We have our separation at the top. And if this sat longer, we'd get more of it. Okay. One thing you can see, quite a bit of uh, vegetable oil does not make a ton of biodiesel, but it does work. And it's, I mean, think of all the uh, French fry vats in the 20,000 McDonald's stores and Burger King and Wendy's and all those, 
that right there probably makes a significant amount of diesel fuel. And they have ways to be more efficient and they can get other things out of their methanol and, and glycerin and stuff that's actually pretty usable for what we wanna do. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is the freezing point. And I'm not gonna carry the computer with me this time. What I'm gonna do here is I have this thermometer. I'm gonna go back there in a couple minutes. It doesn't take long to freeze. And it should have turned into a gel, okay? And I'm sure it will, because every time we've done this, it, it works pretty well. I'm gonna stick the thermometer in there, okay? And what we do is hold our hand on it, and we watch for when it turns back from a gel back into a liquid. And that should tell us the melting point of this stuff. So that's gonna be our third test. We did the pH test where we got around a pH of nine. We had flammability, I think it was fair enough. I'm guessing maybe 10, 10 seconds or so in that uh, ballpark. And then the last thing we're gonna do is the freezer part. It says it's supposed to sit in there for 15 to 20 minutes. In my experience, five minutes or less allows us to do what we need to do with this thing. So I'm gonna start walking down there and get it and I will see what happens here. Uh, yeah, I've got the right thermometer. So I will be back in a moment. So, our biodiesel did indeed gel. Sorry, it's all back to a liquid now. It happened right around eight or nine degrees Celsius that I saw it all turn back into a liquid. So that's what you can write down for your melting point. So let's just review our stuff here. I'm saying eight to nine degrees Celsius is the melting point. So here was our data again. We had the empty grad cylinder, 71.85, graduated cylinder with the biodiesel, 116.33. The volume of the biodiesel in the cylinder, 51 milliliters. Our pH was nine and the melting point, eight or nine degrees Celsius. So that is about it for our biodiesel lab. To finish this one up, all right, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and this is the sheet that I want you to do and fill out. And this sheet, there's two sheets, it's pages six and seven. Those are the two that you should sit down and fill out and write out. And that's what I'm gonna have you turn in for this lab. So there's lab number three, the production of biodiesel from vegetable oil. Hope you enjoyed it. It is my fervent desire now, you guys, this year to be able to have a couple Saturdays I can make the lab available, you can come in and maybe we'll do a couple of the labs because really that's part of the fun and that's part of really what you need to be able to do in organic chem is to get some lab experience. Thank you so much.